All right, man, we're going to talk about Mike Valenti. Um, I'm going to put this uh, link in the description. I'm going to try to pin it also in the comment section when he was pretty much pissing going to Jawan Howard Hire for the University of Michigan. But first, let's kind of talk about what happened yesterday a bit. Congratulations to the women's basketball team. They beat Ohio State's women's basketball team in Ann Arbor yesterday. Like yesterday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we beat the men's team. Um, and also, they had a kid from um pull his name up from grand rapids i guess he had a chip on his shoulder yesterday because um uh, i guess michigan didn't recruit him or whatever and uh he went off uh yesterday and basically you know it was him he had a couple other guys doing well um but let's talk about it check out the college sports playlist hit that subscribe button bell icon button share the video and um you know you look at yesterday's game that was a game that Middle of the road or bad teams find a way to lose, okay? They started off kind of losing, and then this team kind of got together. And um, it's a team game. And that's what you got to think about college basketball. College basketball is not an individual sport like the NBA, okay? College basketball is the best team who win, okay? Sometimes you have a situation where Kentucky and, you know, Julius Randle that year, that talent took over. The year Anthony Davis took over. But ultimately, it's a team game. Okay, then talent. You got some teams that's able to jail the, you know, become a team quick and they're able to jail and they got the talent as well. But college is is team oriented, then, you know, it's talent. And that's usually what happens. We're talking about single elimination March Madness tournament, and it was Dwayne Washington. He had a big game yesterday as far as points. Thirty points. He had some help from EJ Lindell, twenty three points and ten. But ultimately, what's really sep- sep- separating Michigan from a part? Why they are sixteen and one? They shouldn't have pretty much lost their focus versus um, who was it? Was it Wisconsin? They lost to? Was that just popped them? Or was it Minnesota? Whoever they lost to, they had just popped them. But ultimately, what the difference in this team is? It's just not the camaraderie with Isaiah Livers. I mean, I've, yeah, Isaiah Livers and and and, and Franz uh, Wagner and uh, and uh, Chardine Brown and Mike Smith, who had a great game yesterday. Um, ultimately, Eli Brewer, you got a lot of guys. It's a, it's a, it's a team oriented veteran kind of team, but ultimately what's the difference is, you, you know, Livers, Brooks, Smith, Wagner, uh, Brown, Davis, Brandon juniors played a little bit yesterday. What's the difference is the talent of Hunter Dickerson. That's the difference. 22 points, nine rebounds, two assists. He's the difference. This team will probably be, uh, I'm probably be nice and probably say ten and like ten and five, you know, um, or, or or ten and seven or whatever it may be, eleven and six. This type of team that is, but Hunter Dixon put them over the top. They have a star, so not only do you have a team that's talented, but now you have the star power of Hunter Dickerson. And you know, to be honest, he probably gonna be a one and done. But Jawan Howard would have had a Isaiah Todd as well too. He went to the G League, and you can't knock them because I found out yesterday they're playing 15 games in the bubble, right? But they make a, a lot of them make $500,000 on the G League to select team. But imagine if you was able to put Isaiah Todd in his, in his rotation and you can make it fit. But the foundation of this team is, is, is team, facilitating, making an extra pass, good shooting. The talent on top of the foundation of, you know, uh, Livers, Brooks, Smith, Wagner, Brown, Davis, and everybody else. And the talent, they got the talent, but the whipped cream and the cherry is pretty much Hunter Dickerson. And he's the difference from this team being a middle-of-the-road NCAA, maybe second-round, uh, sweet, sweet, you know, maybe a Sweet 16 type of team at best if they got hot and lucky. He's the difference between them being that and the league team. He's the difference. If you were able to put Isaiah Todd in there, you know, you probably could move Livers to the two and, you know, maybe Brooks and Smith could stay at the point. It's going to be a problem. And, and, and this is what – um, this is why it was beneficial for John Beeline to kind of step down and go to, go to Cleveland is because now Jawan Howard is bringing in the talent. Remember, he would have brought in Isaiah Todd. <laughs> They'd probably be unstoppable. Now he's bringing in the talent, and when you got a guy that's bringing in the talent, and, and he also know how to coach and facilitate, and had a team facilitate, pass the ball. Now you see the talent starting to mix with what John Beeline brought this team first veteran type of team. And Juwan ain't done yet. You know he got to win, but really it's pretty much Jay. He probably gonna be a, a 
at, at worst, I don't say at worst, but he's probably going to be a Jay Wright type of coach, but with a little bit more elite talent, you know. But, you know, a great game, 92-87 over Ohio State. And, and bad teams and ordinary teams find a way to lose that game. Ohio State ain't a bad team. We probably gonna see them down the road outside the Big Ten tournament, but they got some they got some veteran guys, and that's pretty much the difference. You put uh, Dickerson on top of that, but I'm gonna try to put this in the description in the source so you can try to if I remember to in a pin it in the post. Um, for the most part, uh, well, all the part I can't share the audio because it's not mine. I don't have the permission from CBS 97. Take pretty much when he got hired. Over a year and some change ago, whatever it was, Mike Valenti pretty much shitted on him. It was it kind of, you know, him being a Spartan, and also they terrible this year. And I've been saying that Tom Izzo one of the more overrated coaches because you've seen what he's done with a lot of the premier talent that was around the Metro Detroit area. Um, uh, who who are you had? Uh, Kalen Lucas, um, the, the cat from uh, from Persian, Keith Applin, um, the other cute Dewan, I forget his name, not Dewan, uh, Dewan Summers was it? So it's a lot of local talent that he messed up as well, too. But that's another story for another day. But pretty much he said Juwan had had experience. Even when Eric Spolster kind of was suspended, he wasn't the next guy up. You don't know what type of offense he's going to run. And you don't know what he's getting as a coach. And this was a bad hire. And when you say something like that, you can tell that Mike Valenti probably never played a second of organized basketball. But when you play as many basketball games as Juwan Howard, and people forget Juwan Howard was the first player in the NBA to obtain a $100 million contract. That was Jawan Howard. Then I think Kevin Garnett came and a few other guys, maybe before him or after him. Well, obviously, a few more guys after him. But with Jawan, you don't play. You don't get the – You don't get the. Uh, they don't call you a technician at the University of Michigan when you're playing. He played, what, three years of college basketball, played with the Bullets. Now his name was the Wizards. They said the Bullets was too violent. You don't have that much experience playing college, high school, pros, sitting on the end of a pro bench, win a championship as a player. They don't call you the technician on the block, and you don't know how to coach basketball. All the coaches that he had over his career, come on, you don't have to coach to be a great coach to have experience. I'm pretty sure Juwan Howard had a great high school coach. Your parents are great coaches on life. So coaching ain't just X's and O's. You got to know how to communicate with players. And people worried about, well, he don't know how to recruit. He don't know. Well, you're going to have Jalen Rose and Chris Weber and all those guys go make it fashionable to come to University of Michigan anyway. Jalen shot you out on ESPN. Chris Weber doing his thing in TNT and he trying to help a lot of people in Detroit um, start marijuana businesses. He's got $100 million he's trying to spend. Go look that up. Um, you know, you got all these dudes that's fat, that's on TV. The University of Michigan alumni is, is stupid. What do you think, uh, old boy from the, from the Lions? Rod Woods are running. He went to the University of Michigan. There's another cat I looked up yesterday. He went to the University of Michigan. I can't remember his name. So, to be honest, at, at a time, if Juwan can get this program to be in dominant, don't be surprised if Michigan turn into a basketball school and Michigan football turn into, they always going to pour money into that program. But when they pour money into the basketball program, you winning, you selling out. Don't be surprised if they don't, they don't renovate Christ Arena, make it bigger, you know, get them an NBA type of stadium. Don't be surprised if that don't happen to Juwan, keep them extended, and he stay extended, and he stay here. If he become, if he can do what Mike Krzyzewski did, you know, he don't have to he don't have to start from behind like being at the University of Duke. You know what I mean? Like Duke wasn't known as a big school at all. Now you're in a situation where Michigan already got the brand. They already got the hella support. You know, you got all of that. So now you put that on top of a winner. You know, the thing with Beeline, Beeline didn't have an A-list talent. You recruit Isaiah Todd, obviously don't come Hunter Dickinson. Now he got the talent. Don't be surprised if Michigan don't transfer to a basketball school, but Mike Valenti shitted on it. You know, he don't know what he's doing. And you obviously know. Don't, he don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Excuse my language. So, at the end of the day, I don't know if some people might remember this. Back in the 90s, he had this uh, group called Third Base, okay? And um, Third Base had MC Search. MC Search is also was also a radio jockey on 97, 97.9 WGLB in Michigan. And they had this saying that you get the gas face. And Mike Valenti get the ultimate gas face in Michigan. You know, he get the gas face because he was saying he don't know what you're talking about. Need to worry about Izzo, who didn't hurt more talent, didn't help more talent. And that's why Jason Richardson and, you know, and um, Zach Randolph are still some of the biggest talent he had. He's talking about 20 years ago down there. But hey, let me know what you guys think. Check out the college sports playlist. Don't forget me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Reach out if you have a business question, inquiry, response, share video requests, all our social media links, description, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. 
Uh, check that out. I want to make a financial donation. Cash App, CJ Good313. PayPal link in the description box. Best way to donate, share, share the video. 